Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. I think. Yes. Let's speak it together, please. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. As newborn babes desire pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Everyone say, I'm chosen and I'm precious. I didn't say I felt like it. I'm chosen and I'm precious. Amen? No one said we looked like it either. Praise God. <laughs> Verse 5. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. Priesthood. Everybody say holy. 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 Hallelujah. Good. It's a holy priesthood. Amen. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. In other words, he who follows him won't be put to shame. That means follow his ways. Amen? Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious both to those who are disobedient the stone which the builders rejected has become the key, chief cornerstone. And a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the what? To the word. I want to share something with you that the word is divine order. But through the word there's a holy order. And I want to talk about some of that tonight. Verse 9. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Has everybody been, in here been appointed to the word? Amen. Amen. But you are a chosen generation, a royal, royal, royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against your soul. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in a day of visitation. In other words, laying aside all deceit, provoking, mocking, evil thinking, and words. To build up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. Not to stumble being out of order, but to walk in order. See, when you're out of the word, you're out of order. Amen? As a chosen royal priesthood, with a loyal heart to your call, to your purpose, to your destiny... And to your fellowship, rejecting self-centered ways of carnal living. Everyone say, loyalty brings royalty. Royalty brings favor and benefits. Why? Because you are associated with the kingdom of God and the throne. There's a difference. Again, we've talked about a self-centered heart, which is an unloyal heart. Even the Lord spoke about kings that were doing the right things, but their were, hearts were not loyal. A loyal heart is essential. And there are not many that have loyal hearts in that people just do what they want to do when they want to do it because they feel it. See, a loyal heart goes the extra mile. Always. A loyal heart is not one that's self-centered has nothing to do with them. Their thoughts are only about kingdom business and about God's love. Expressing God's love. 
Not getting ahead of God, but allowing the Holy Spirit to lead in every area. That's why it's called Holy Spirit. Loyalty brings royalty. Royalty brings favor and benefits. In Romans chapter 1. There's a difference between divine order and holy order. Romans chapter 1. And verse 1. When the word says bond servant, anybody remember what it means? Bound to the spirit. We are bound to the spirit. In verse 1, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. Separated. Sanctified. Amen? Separated. Which he promised before through his prophets in the holy scriptures. How many of all those scriptures are holy? Concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of what? Holiness. Holiness. By resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Among whom you also are called of Jesus Christ. Again, the spirit of holiness brings holy order. There's a difference. Holy order has to do with you as a temple and a tabernacle. This is called holy order. Everything. It is sanctified, but is consecrated totally unto God. It's holy. It's clean. It's pure. It's God's approval on it. Anything that he touches brings holiness. See, we have a divine order. But then there's our holy order. There are things that we do according to the divine will of God in order. Works, things to that degree. But there's a holy order that deals directly with you and the tabernacle of God in his presence. Amen? That's why we are called a holy temple. The spirit of holiness is to bring holy order by the Holy Spirit. Starting with sanctification of the heart, mind, will, and emotions and desires. What's happening is we're to obtain a transformational condition. Getting all things to be connected to his presence and his glory. So everything associated with you should be connected to his presence and his glory. His presence and his glory. Why? Because from his presence and his glory is holy. That's why the, all the angels and the living creatures around the throne of God always are crying out what? Holy. Holy. Because it's pure. Bright. Pure. Nothing associated with any darkness, grayness, nothing. It's pure. Brilliant. Before God Almighty. Approved by Him. Set apart for Him. Holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we die to selfish and self-centeredness, <laughs> self-opinionated, self in the area of the natural, humanly, carnally, and every evil intent, new life of holy order begins to be released. In other words, the things that are displeasing to God begin to dissolve. The more you are dissolving of yourself, the more you are dissolving of your attitude, mode, and desires, the more you are dissolving of those words that are not holy, those thoughts that are not holy, the more they dissolve and fade away, the more you become like him. The more you get connected, the more access you have, the more favor you have. See, this is not, it's a difference between divine order. We live a life of divine order, yes. And everything that we do, we think, put things in a divine order that are pleasing to God. But there is a holy order that is connected between you and God's presence and his tabernacle. 
It must be holy. Why? Because it's connected to his throne. Everything. That's why we cross over. Is everybody okay? Romans 8. The more we dissolve, the more we have access. Romans 8, 18. You know, we cry out, Lord, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Well, if there ain't holiness there, there ain't no glory coming. Let's speak verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we who also have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance we endure. In other words, there's an area where we... When, when we know that something will try to interfere or defile the holiness. That's what, when he says about grieving the spirit, what are you doing? <laughs> You're preventing holiness from its operation. Why? Because he's called Holy Spirit for, the re for a purpose. He's holy. He's to bring holiness, sanctification. He's to bring purity. That's why God is looking for a pure heart. Why? So he can impart holiness. There's a desire in us when there's the character of holiness taking operation and possession. There's something different that changes you. You are more concerned about maintaining the purity of God's presence in you. You become more sensitive to things that defile. You become more sensitive to things that are not in divine order. It's not an area to where just it's repentance. We avoid it. We avoid it at all costs. Because we want to keep that. It's a clear line to the throne room of God. It's a clear open door. And we don't want any interference with it. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 1. Praise God. That's why the word says, build up your most holy faith. See, there's holy faith. There's faith and there's holy faith. Holy faith is the faith that moves because of the character of God, but it moves in a place of beyond righteousness. It's pure. It has nothing to do with self. Holiness, the moment self comes in, it defiles it. Instantly, boom, grieves the Holy Spirit while we're trying to move on. The enemy always tries to place something in us where we put ourselves first. That's why tear, the enemy loves to tear up people with emotion. Grieving the Holy Spirit. What are you doing? You're preventing the Holy Spirit from bringing holiness. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 2. Or verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be what? Multiplied to you in the knowledge of God 
and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great promises, precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Remember, God is love. It doesn't provoke. Amen? It doesn't cause to stumble. It holds no grudges. God's love is pure. Why? Because God's love is holy. Does everybody get it? God's love is what? Holy. When it isn't, you, when it isn't perceived or seen as holy, then it's worldly love. Selfish love. In verse 8. For if these things are yours and abound, you'll be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent, more diligent to your call and election sh and sure, uh, election sure. For if you do these things, you'll never stumble. For his own entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Divine nature escaping the corruption of an unholy world. With the divine power into the reality that we are divine, that we are divine property. Everyone say, I'm divine property. Holding fast to the holy order of God Almighty. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Remember, our life is in Christ. His life is not, is not in ours. Amen. First Thessalonians 4. Verse 1. You know, um, anyways, we'll get there. Finally then, verse 1, Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. That means grow more and more, mature more and more. Until the divine nature is matured in you and holiness is taken over. And there is no area to we want anything or desire anything to defile the temple. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each one of you should know how to possess his own vessel. Or you might even say his own tongue. His own attitude or motive or desires. That each one of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of loss like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this manner. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to what? Uncleanness, but to what? In holiness. Therefore, he who rejects us does not reject man, but God, who has also given us the what? Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And if indeed you do so toward all brethren, 
who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more and more and more in love and holiness. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life. Mind your own stinking business. And work with your own hands as we commanded you. That you may walk properly. Walk properly toward those who are outside. And that you may lack what? Nothing. Why? Remember, loyalty, um, loyalty leads to what? Royalty. Royalty leads to what? Favor and benefits. You'll never lack nothing. Nothing. Everything will be added abundantly to you. If that isn't happening, things will be, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what defilement opens to. Sanctification is not fasting. People think, well, I'm going to sanctify myself by fasting. Fasting is not sanctification. Hello. It is the separation from the carnal attitude, motive, and desires. It's the divine property of God and His divine presence brings His holiness into us so we live out a life of a holy order in a priestly fashion. Why? Because we are ministers to the Lord. Amen? We want to live a life of a priestly fashion in every area. There are garments. There is everything. All of these things are associated with holy order. Why? Because it pertains to the presence of God, the throne room, the tabernacle. You know, those guys, when they were, the priests would go in, before they had to go through a whole ritual. Then they'd tie a rope to their ankle with a bell. Ding, ding. If they went into the most holy place and, and they missed anything of that ritual, they died instantly. And they'd have to pull them out. Because it wasn't holy. They went into the most holy place and they better be holy. They were careful of everything, of mouth, garments, everything. They did all the sacrifices. They were cleansed by the blood. They did everything according to the divine order, which is actually a holy order to enter the most holy place. And entering the most holy place, there was a oneness with the presence of God. A change. See, that's how you and I change. And that, so in holy, so many people think, well, I'm going to get holier because I fast. No, you ain't going to get holy of you. You may lose some weight. You may get clarity because uh, fasting is detox. Does everybody get it? It's detox. Man, go outside for a few hours every day. You'll detox. But it's detoxing of unclean things. And, and so, why? So you can have more clarity. In fact, it was required in the Old Testament that they fast three times a year before they approach the Lord. Why? So they can have clear heads. Remember, before they even left, when the Lord said, uh, everybody uh, going to move you out of the, in the Exodus, he said, don't eat any leaven. Why? Because leaven messes it's yeast. messes with the mind. Is everybody okay? Exodus 28. Exodus 28, verse 1. 1 through 3, would you read it with me? Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Now take Aaron, your brother, and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister to me as a priest. Aaron and Aaron's son, Nadab, Abu, Elzer, Ith, whatever his name is. And you shall make holy what? Holy what? Garments, garments, holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. So you shall speak to all who are gifted artisans, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments and consecrate him, that he may minister to me as a priest.
priest. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, skillfully woven tunic, turban, a hash, or a sash, sorry. So they shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, his sons, that he may minister to me as a priest. Now, we have the garments of praise, which is, we have priestly garments, Amen. But if you look at this in the priestly garments, which is holy, when you put on the full armor, that should be holy also. See, these are holy attire for you and I to wear. It should be holy, not defiled. That's why it's so important we put, we, we praise the Lord. We get into his presence. We seek him every morning. We get dressed with his presence and glory, what we call the garments are under armor. Amen? It's under armor under your full armor. Because if there's not holiness underneath, there's no anointing outside of it. Hallelujah. Priestly garments consecrate, set apart as holy unto the Lord. Garments of praise are part of the holy order. 1 Peter 1. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter one, verse thirteen. So we want to become more sensitive to the things. Not taking things for granted, but become more sensitive to things so we maintain a holy life. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, your thoughts. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former laws as in your former ignorance, but as he who called you is Holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. In other words, you're not a reactor, you're a responder. You're allowing the Holy Spirit with pure words, pure heart, pure thoughts. Amen? No coarse jesting. All of these things. I mean, don't get me wrong, every, people can play around or whatever, but then there's an area where it, it now defiles the atmosphere. It defiles things. Things that people do, don't even realize it. Because they're currently, they're not sensitive to, enough to the holy things. They may be sensitive to divine things, but not the holy things. That's totally different. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Verse 17. If you call on the Father who is without partiality, judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear or reverence knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. For he indeed was foreordained, indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the, of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who through him believe in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope is in God. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a what? Pure heart, a loyal heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is grass, and all the glory of a man is the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away. But the word of God, of the Lord, endures forever. Now this is the word by which the gospel is preached to you. Be holy. Conduct holy. 1 Corinthians 3.
when you begin to drift from holiness, you'll hear holy shift. And you have to move the other way real quick. It's not holy cow. Amen. Or holy baloney or whatever. First Corinthians three sixteen. Let's speak it. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. Therefore, do not, don't let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul, Apollos, Sophias, or the wor world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ, and Christ is God's. Holy Temple, Second Peter, Second Timothy, Chapter One. Verse 8, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Holy order. Let's speak it. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. But has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and in love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you Kept, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This you know, that all these in Asia have turned away from me, among whom are Phileas and Harmonious. Then the Lord grant mercy on all of them, for he often refreshed me. Anyways, you and I, in this whole time right now that we're living, we have a holy calling. It's called pure. Pure. See, we, we talk about all of these things, but we, we don't talk enough about holiness and purity. All of these things have to do with being with a loyal heart. Lo loyalty brings royalty. Being faithful to the things. That, that's why we're to, be bond, we're to be bound to the Spirit. But there should be a holiness, a reverence of holiness, everything that you and I do, clean and pure. I mean, when people go out and play, they get dirty, right? Then they come in and they shower. But, again, it's all carnal. Even though when we repent, we get washed by the blood. But there's an area where you and I want to maintain a level of holiness. Because if you don't maintain a level of holiness, you start over. There's a place where you will start right over. There are things that people have done that God has stepped away from, and they still think that they're fine with God. And God is saying, no, you're starting over. You have 
defiled my holiness by your words, by your thoughts, by your attitude, and by your motives. Hallelujah. We have a holy calling in this <laughs> assisting. Uh, it's, uh, so our self is constantly dissolving in every area, especially in areas of desire, attitude, motives, whatever it may be. They're dissolving. So we're allowing God's holiness to take over every area. Hallelujah. First John. Chapter 2. In verse 26. First John chapter 2, 26. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you need not that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. Listen, the anointing is holy. Amen? It is holy. When the anointing comes, it's holy. The, the anointing is always teaching holiness because the anointing is associated with the tabernacle and the throne of God. It's always promoting holiness, a holy order. So we're being taught by the Holy Spirit to maintain a holy order to live a life of holiness, consecrated unto God, undefiled by carnality. 2 Timothy 3. In verse 8, uh, hallelujah. Now, as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, is everybody there? So did these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith. Is the faith holy? Yes. But they will progress no further. For their folly will be manifested to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to be in Antioch, at Icium, in Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Holy Scriptures. You know, when you desire to live a holy life, there are things that are not even acceptable. There, there, there is just places that it's, you know, that's not even acceptable. Certain words, certain attitudes, whatever places, things, there are things that are just not acceptable. Amen? First John chapter 5. Verse 18. You know, the word says that God's coming back for a blemish, clean bride. That's called holy. Let's speak in verse 18. We know that who was ever born of God does not sin. 
but he has been born of God, keeps himself. Keeps himself what? Consecrated. Sanctified. Holy. Always in a place of looking at holy order. Not just divine order. Why? Because holy order is associated with you and the tabernacle of God Almighty. Amen? The throne room, his glory, and his presence. And here it says, and the wicked one does not touch that person. The wicked one cannot touch anything that's holy. He can only cause an individual to vile, defile his own holiness by causing him to agree with him. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God in eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from what? Idols. Idols. I'm going to close at Revelation 22. Holy order. In verse 1, and he showed me a pure, that meant holy, river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne. Proceeding from where? Anything associated with that's holy order, isn't it? Proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb. In the middle of its street, and either side of the river was a tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Benefits. And these shall be no more, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun. For the Lord gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. I want you to grab hold again. This light is called holy. Then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of all, the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must surely take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. And he said to me, see that you don't do that. What was he trying to correct him? Holy order. For I am your fellow servant and your brethren and prophets and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, do not seal the words of, this, of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexual immoral, murderers and idolaters, whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him who hears come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city. And from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says 
Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. And even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy order. God is calling this now. He's increasing it. He's showing things. Why? Because his presence and his glory has become stronger. And there are going to be many people who will miss it. Amen. We don't want to miss it. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask for your mercies and grace to abound abundantly. And by your spirit, we will be taught to be holy in every area for your glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Stay dressed and be blessed.